This is an OSC Oscar. And those are noises it's not supposed to make. This is how it sounded when it came back from a second round of repairs. And I think I'll better just tell you the whole repair saga. When I bought this synthesizer from a friend, I knew that as a minimum I would need to clean the potentiometers and replace the battery. But the synthesizer was in fact completely dead, so I didn't know if it needed more work or not. But this Oscar is not only unusual and valuable, it's basically an antique. I didn't want to do this job myself originally. I wanted to give it to an expert. But I couldn't find any. The shops I found that repaired synthesizers just said we only repair things that we are authorized to repair. And even when searching abroad online I couldn't find anybody that were willing to say I will repair your Oscar synthesizer. So I had to take it on myself. I felt like I didn't have a choice but I also felt like I could do this because I know a fair bit about electronics I went to an engineering school I've soldered before I've fixed things it shouldn't be that hard but I didn't want to just fix the immediate problems I wanted to make this tip-top shape so that it would last for another 35 years so I unnecessarily disassembled the keyboard to clean it really well and I decided to replace the connector between the two main circuit boards because that's a known problem and that very often fails. And of course it was while replacing that connector that I lifted some traces of the PCB. And I have no experience in how to solve this so I decided to look for companies that repair circuit boards and I found one here in my town where I live. So I drove down to them and handed it over. And already the next day I could pick it up, now with a new connector in place. But now the Oscar was unreliable and would die from time to time. I looked into that and that was a bad soldier joint on the connector. It was the ground wire that was bad and in fact when I looked at it I could see that the traces on the circuit board had lifted more since I gave it to them. They had done a bad job. Now fixing that soldier joint was not a problem but after I'd done that the synthesizer died on me anyway and this time it didn't come back and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. I was out of my depth again, so I assembled it and took it back to the repair shop. But their response was not what I hoped for. They only repair computers. Well, maybe they could have told me that before they actually started repairing it. But they did give me a recommendation for a guy who did accept attempting to repair it. And it was with him for a couple of weeks while he waited for components. But then I finally got it back. And that's when you join me at the beginning of the video with an Oscar that only makes weird screeching noises. I had to open this up to see what he had actually done. And the first thing we notice is that he has put epoxy onto the contact to stabilize it. That's not the solution I would have chosen, but well, too late now, it's not coming off. Next thing we see is that he has replaced the op amps in the VCA and VCF. But instead of getting dual inline packages like it should be, he has gotten surface mount circuits and put adapters there. He claims one of the op amps had a leg that was broken, which sounds very strange. But he replaced it not with the LM13600 type of op amps, because they're not manufactured anymore. He replaced it with LM13700 op amps, and they are not a perfect match.
That's why the filter is now wildly and constantly self-oscillating. And worst of all, one of these adapters are not inside the socket. He has removed the socket and soldered the adapter directly to the board, because otherwise it didn't fit. Now this is the circuit board we don't want to solder on unnecessarily, because it's brittle. Now obviously this guy thinks I broke it because I'm an idiot, and he's not wrong, but it still feels unnecessary. Couldn't he just have waited until he found the... What? Where's the minus 5 volt regulator? It's just gone. What has he done here? Okay, I found it on the underside. Another ugly hack, he didn't have the right type, so he cut the legs of another one and just soldered it on the underside. It's like he just has no pride in his work whatsoever. So I'm starting to feel a bit dejected here. Should I give up? It seems like everybody that touches this synthesizer just makes it worse. I now need to desolder these op amps and desoldering things from that circuit board is what broke the circuit board in the first place. But on the other hand, my local electronics shop had a sale on a desoldering gun. So maybe I can desolder this without destroying the circuit board. Only one way to find out. Hey, I'm not giving up today. Nothing getting in my way. And if it breaks some more of that, I will fix it up again. If something goes a little wrong, you can go ahead and bring it on. If it breaks some more of that, I will fix it up again. Oh, 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 I'll fix it up again. Oh, 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 I'll fix it up again. Oh, the power switch broke. I guess I'll have to fix that up too. It had a little label on it and uh, looking at RS Components website, that exact component isn't manufactured anymore, but one that looks exactly the same in every way is manufactured today. So I ordered one of those. And with new op-amps and a new power button, that's it, right? It works now? Well, not completely. It now made reasonable noises, but not all of the knobs did something. Some worked, some didn't. This turned out to be because one of the address lines that came over to scan these knobs from the main PCB board didn't always work. The contact was bad, it was a bad soldier joint, once again. And if you want to know what this addressing I talked about is all about and how these knobs work, I can make a video about it. Tell me in the comments if I should. Lastly, I needed to fix that pesky ground hum. And here I once again have to say thank you to GBG Man, who in a comment on my previous video sent me a link to a paper on how to do proper grounding. And I've gotten recommendations from different places to put a resistor between the zero volt of the circuitry and the incoming ground. But according to this paper, the proper way is not a resistor, but a capacitor. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm putting a 10 picofarad capacitor, because the capacitor should be as small as possible, says the paper between the incoming ground and therefore the chassis ground, that's the same thing on this machine anyway, and the zero volt ground of the circuit boards. The zero volt should be connected to the ground, but it should not be connected directly. Putting a capacitor in between it gets rid of ground hum issues. I believe that this is what is referred to as a floating ground, but I'm not 100% sure. In any case, after doing this and taking the Oscar back up to my home studio where I had these problems in the first place, the Oscar is now completely quiet. There is no hum whatsoever. 
I have been asked by one person in the comments to make a video on how to assemble the Oscar and I think I will because it's a bit tricky and I found a way that I think is a little bit easier than the instructions I could find online. And as previously mentioned, if you want a video on how the Oscar works internally, leave a comment. I might make a video about that as well. But this concludes the repair saga of this Oscar. It's working now. Now on to other brave new adventures in repair land, where I yet again repair things I don't understand how they work. See you then!